Gentleman from the third, Dr. Fluharty. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, gentlemen, continue to yield. Gentlemen, yield. Gentlemen, I'll, I'll let him get a drink. <laughs> You're doing a, a great job. Now, I want to get an idea of this affluent limitations you've been describing. I have notes everywhere, but are we going from a 7Q10? Is that where we're currently at? That, that is the current approach, yes, sir. And where are we going now? To the harmonic mean approach. And 7Q10 is a more stringent standard, is it not? It, it is a, it is a I, I don't know about stringent, it is, a more, it is a standard which results in a lower number. So looking at trying to find the definition of it, it's the lowest average discharge over a period of one week with a recurrence interval of 10 years. So we're going from a more stringent 7Q10 to a more weakened standard for water flow, are we not? I don't know about the word weakened, but we, we are going to a standard which takes into account periods of higher flow, yes sir. So by higher flow, we're assuming that the stream in question has a higher dilution rate, are we not? We're, we're not assuming it, we're mathematically proving it, but yes sir. Through, but over a longer period of time, over, harmonic flows over a longer period of time, right? Harmonic mean is a continuous calculation, so many yeah. streams in West Virginia have flow monitors in place that the agency would use for that calculation. And it's more of an average instead of the low flow, right? It, it is by definition an average. So it's an average and not taken from the low flow. My point is, if we have a short-term exposure of a higher percentage and number of carcinogens, we're not gauging by the low flow, we're gauging by a higher dilution rate. That, that again confuses the concept of effluent limits and water quality standards. Sure. So the, the kind of exposure that the gentleman points out is exactly the kind of exposure embodied in the acute water quality standard number. So that's, that, that's the kind of exposure that's intended to be prohibited by our water quality standard, not by an effluent limit. You, you mentioned something earlier about acute and chronic um, and the gentleman mentioned it, acute and chronic as far as flow goes. Now, I thought that only referred to aquatic life. So a acute and chronic have nothing to do with flow. That's so, right. So those, those are, those are the, just in the water quality standards. But as part of the water quality standards, they, they refer to aquatic life, not human life. That's human my life. understanding. That's your understanding. Okay. And, and lastly, when we're talking about what this bill does and does not do, do we currently allow for the overlapping of mixing zones? So at this moment, our law does not embody the concept of overlapping mixing zones. There are situations in which our Department of Environmental Protection can petition up to, to right. US EPA for that, but right. we've not given them the express authority to do so. So we allow the opportunity, and you can even get a variance, right? I, well, actually, we, we've not allowed it. We've just not, we've not, our law is silent on it. But uh, from testimony in judiciary, if you have a mixing zone, you can apply for a variance to the mixing zone, was my understanding. Well, you can apply for a variance of anything. So the, the, the way our water quality program works is that one can petition US EPA for, for, for anything, and in the event they issue an approval, we're, we're permitted to go forward. That's, that's the concept okay. of the cooperative federalism of that legislation. And, and then by passing this legislation, we'll, we will explicitly be allowing for the, the combination or the explicit overlap of mixing zones, which we currently do not allow. Well, we will be authorizing DEP to use its discretion to do it. So, so yes, answer is yes there. Thank you. Yes, it is.